Welcome back to Social Distancing Storytime. We're going to be reading another Tommy DePaolo book. This is Streganona's Magic Lessons. A story and pictures by Tommy DePaolo. And starring Streganona and Big Anthony. And introducing a new character as well. Babalona, the baker's daughter, was angry. Every day, summer, fall, winter, and spring, she had to get up before the sun to bake the bread. Then, piling the loaves on her head, she went to deliver them. But her work wasn't finished. Rushing back to the bakery, she had to mix the flour and salt and water and yeast and set the dough to rise for tomorrow's bread. Don't forget, her father, the baker, would say, to make the cookies and bake the cakes. And remember, Babalona, to clean up everything spick and span. I'm going now to see my friends. And off he would go to sit all day in the square of the little town in Calabria. One day, Babalona said, Papa, there is too much work to do. I need some help. Get up earlier, her father said. But I get up now before the sun, said Babalona, and I'm the last one in town to get to bed. That's the way things are, her father said, as he went out the door on his way to the square. And don't forget, he called back, you have a wedding cake to bake. That did it. Babalona dusted the flour from her hands and took off her apron. I'm going to change the way things are, she said. I'll go see Streganona. She's so wise. She'll help me. I think I know how to help you, Streganona said after hearing Babalona's sad tale. So many people come to me with their troubles. I could certainly use some help. Why not stay with me? And I will teach you my magic. Oh, Streganona, said Babalona. Thank you. We'll start today, said Streganona. Now, Big Anthony, who worked around the house and in the garden for Streganona, was listening, and he was always listening to what other people were talking about instead of working. Streganona, he shouted, running into the house. Me too. Teach me your magic too. Oh, Anthony, Streganona said with a smile, I can't do that. Why don't you go and milk the goat? Now Big Anthony was the one who was angry. I'll show Streganona, he muttered. I'll just go and work for the baker now that Babalona has left. Down the hill, Big Anthony ran. The baker hired him on the spot. The first thing you do is mix the dough, the baker told Big Anthony. Put in this much flour, this much salt, this much water, and this much yeast. He looked hard at Big Anthony's smiling face. Do you understand? The yeast makes the dough rise. Now mix it, the right, mix it right away, and... By the time I get back at six o'clock, the dough will be ready to make into loaves. Si, senor, yes, sir, Big Anthony said. The baker walked out the door and toward the square. Let's see what Big Anthony does. I'll just look at everything first, said Big Anthony, poking around. Cookies! He ate one, then another. Cakes! He ate one, then another. Big Anthony ate them all. In fact, he was still eating when the clock in the square struck four. Mamma mia, said Big Anthony. I forgot to mix the dough. It won't rise in time. Ah, I know. The yeast makes the dough rise. I'll just put in a lot more of that and the dough will rise much faster. I'll still have time for a nap, he said when he got through. He sat down and promptly fell asleep. What a sight the baker saw when he returned. Out! shouted the baker. Way too much yeast. What's the matter, Big Anthony? asked Signora Rosa. The baker threw me out. Now I have no job, he answered, and it's Streganona's fault. Ah, uh, I never should have left her house if she had let me learn to be a stra I never would have left her house if she had let me learn to be a strega. Silly goose, said Signora Rosa. Who ever heard of a man being a strega? All of a sudden, Big Anthony's eyes lit up. And off he ran. <gasps> to cure a headache, you must first fill the bowl with water, Streganona was telling Babalona. Next, you add a few drops of olive oil. Then you say these magic words. Knock, knock, knock. Streganona went to the door. Oh, Streganona, said a tall girl standing there. All my life I've wanted to learn your magic. Will you teach me, please? Santa Cecilia. Dear me, said Streganona. What is your name, my girl? Uh, Antonia, said the girl. 
Why do you want to learn my magic, Antonia? Stregonona asked. Oh, so I can help people, said Antonia. Ever since I was a little girl, I've always wanted to become a Strega. Ah, in that case, said Stregonona, come right in. This is Babalona. She is learning my magic, too. Babalona stared at Antonia. Then at Stregonona. How nice two girls to teach, Stregonona said. She smiled at Babalona, and then she began. To learn magic and practice it well, she said, you must learn to see and not to see. You must learn to remember and to forget, to be still and to be busy. But mostly, you must be faithful to your work. Do you understand, my dears? See, si, yes, Dragonona, said Babalona. No, no, said Antonia. When are we going to learn how to do the magic things? In time, said Dragonona. Now let's practice some of the magic words. Repeat in the right order after me. Soon Babalona said all of them by heart. Antonia kept mixing them up. Babalona learned the cure for headaches. Antonia didn't. Babalona learned to make love potions. Antonia didn't. Babalona learned how to get rid of warts. Antonia didn't. Babalona said Stregonona, I think you are ready to learn more powerful magic. This is a special book. It is very ancient and contains many magic secrets. Tomorrow we will begin with it. Oh, grazie, Stregonona, said Babalona. Me too, Stregonona, asked Antonia. Not yet, Antonia, said Stregonona. You have other things to learn. That night, while everyone slept, Antonia crept into Stregonona's house. Babalona thinks she's so smart, said Antonia. I'll just read that book tonight, and tomorrow I'll surprise her and Stregonona. The next morning, Antonia was looking very tired. Antonia, said Stregonona, watch and listen. Come, Babalona, we will start. Wait, wait, shouted Antonia. I have a surprise. I know some real magic. Watch me turn that iron kettle into a golden one. Are you sure, Antonia, said Stregonona, frowning. Yes, Oh, yes, said Antonia, beginning to mutter some strange-sounding words, but she stopped. Wait, I remember now. She began again. Be careful, Antonia, warned Babylona. Magic can't be fooled with. I've got it now, Antonia said. She muttered more words. Suddenly, there was a bright flash, some smelly smoke, and the iron kettle was still there. But Stregonona wasn't. Instead, where Stregonona had been standing was a nice, fat, Toad! Now see what you've done, cried Babalona. Oh no, shouted Antonia. Oh help, help, somebody save Stregonona. What have I done? Stregonona warned you to be careful with magic. Now she's gone forever, Babalona said. Stregonona, wept Antonia, picking up the toad. Forgive me, forgive me, please. Babalona, you're so clever, you're so smart. Please change her back again. I promise I'll never play with magic again. I can't change that toad into Stregonona, said Babalona, but I can change Antonia into Big Anthony. Babalona pulled off Antonia's kerchief, and sure enough, there was Big Anthony. Oh, I'll never learn, howled Big Anthony. I'll never learn. Oh, Stregonona, Stregonona, what have I done to you? Perhaps, said Babalona, if you really promise to never, ever play with magic again, that Stregonona will come back. Do you really think that would work, said Big Anthony, sobbing. It's worth a try, said Babalona. Big Anthony put down the toad. He closed his eyes tight, and he pulled his hands over his heart. I promise, I really promise that as long as I live, I will never play with magic again. Just please bring Stregonona back. There was another flash of light, some smelly smoke, and presto, Stregonona was back. Where am I? said Stregonona. Oh, I'm in my little house. Whatever happened to me? Hello, Babylona, and why, Big Anthony, what are you doing here? Where's sweet Antonia? Tell her, Big Anthony, said Babylona. Oh, Stregonona, said Big Anthony, falling on his knees. He told Stregonona what he had done. He was so busy crying and talking. He didn't see the nice fat toad hopping past him out the door. And so Stregonona, please, he said, if you take me back, I promise to be good. I'll do all my chores and never play with magic again. All right, Anthony, said Stregonona, smiling. But before you go...
go back to work, change your clothes. You're wearing Senora Rosa's nicest dress. The end.